Yeah. Tell me when you're ready for me to start spraying and getting this ready. Welcome back to that 1870s homestead. My name is Rachel. I am Todd. We are back on the homestead. We are back from vacation. We're ready to get back into homestead things. Yes. And first thing on our list, which we wanted to do before we went on vacation, we did not have time, was to harvest our 2023 honey. We have 10 supers behind us. Some of them are very, very full. Yeah. Some of them are about half full. We took some of your advice. Um, from last season you guys had some tips for us we'll share some of those with you as we get going on this process we think we have a pretty good system down we have a good plan but that doesn't mean it's going to go perfect uh, yep it's just a small homestead setup we're not professional beekeepers that market honey for commercial purposes um, we have big plans for a lot of this honey this year and uh, more for family reasons and yep. um we're excited to see how much we end up with ready to get going yes sticky. Right. <laughs> let's get this big garage door shut to keep the bees out and we can go all righty You got propolis all over you. Oh my goodness, so do you. First batch of six frames are getting close. We have 10 boxes, like I said, if you have a guess. We bought we bought four or five gallon buckets because we weren't sure what we were gonna have. Last season we did two five gallon buckets. So if you guys have a guess what we're gonna end up with this year, and you wanna play a little game, you can leave a comment down below. Scroll down, you can comment right now while you're watching this. Put your guess down below and at the end we'll see what we ended up with and you can see if you were right. And you will win nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Bragging rights in the comments. Some of these frames are completely packed. That one all bulged out. And this one, Rachel's one of Rachel's favorites. <laughs> it's so full. Look at that. It is stacked. It's gonna be a big spin this time. So if you're new here, don't let this process intimidate you at all. When we first started with these, we started with a small, what, couple hives? 
one or two hives and we just did honey harvest in a five gallon bucket by hand in the kitchen. Didn't have any equipment per se and it wasn't until we got too big that we couldn't do it by hand anymore, at least not without spending an exorbitant amount of time. Last year was our first year with the extractor. But anyway, it is uh, quite enjoyable and very instant gratification. We promised you guys some more tips along the way. Uh, last year, when we tried to get the bees in the colony, in the boxes, out of the supers, we didn't really smoke them, we just tried to use a leaf blower. That was a big mistake that did not go well for us. We were fighting bees basically all day long. <laughs> uh, so far, we're on our third spin. I don't think we've had a single bee in the garage so far. This year, we used, based on your recommendation, some of that honey robber stuff. It's like a... Um, almond almond extract oil basically like in a spray form and you spray that on what's called a fume box it's basically a board that you set on the top that has felt on the inside you you pull your covers off and you put that fume board on there and it pushes the bees down because they don't like that scent once their majority of all of them are pushed down, there's usually a dozen or two, or two dozen left. Then we get out the leaf blower and we clean it up just a little bit and then move it over to the pallet, put a board on top so the bees can't get back in. The other thing that we found, we bought one of these knives, like a decapping knife. It's not heated by any means. You just like saw across. This does not work well. We tried it the first year, the first couple years. The rollers, the pin rollers like this, these work much better, but they do get all clogged up with wax. But they're way, way more effective. Um, yeah, that little thing. This little, can we show them this? But that's good to get that in place. This little tool is also um, handy for getting the wax out of your roller and reaching some of the lower caps that you can't get to. But to do a whole frame with one of these kind of sucks. The roller's way faster. Going slow, this is our backup. This is the slowest part of the whole process. Filtering all the wax pieces out. I don't know, Rachel's had to like scrape this wax out of here probably about four times so far. We're almost halfway done. I'm not gonna tell you how much honey we got so far, but we're starting to encounter a problem in that the bees have found the boxes in front of the garage. So I've been putting the spent boxes, the wet ones that we've extracted the honey out of out there with lids on them, it doesn't matter. They're completely covered and as soon as I take the lids off to put more empties in there, all the bees go in. So I moved all of those to the backyard to the picnic table and the rest of the boxes are gonna be a challenge. So we'll, we'll figure out a plan and we'll work through that. For the messiest honey harvesters. <laughs> I guess so. Mm. It's all good. So what my hand looks like. Quite a few hours later, we had a call from our son and daughter-in-law. With a little bit of a misunderstanding, they called to tell us that about five o'clock that they had made dinner and they were coming over. And we were like, okay, cool. We're in the middle of harvesting honey. We could use some dinner, thank you. But apparently they made dinner for themselves and they were bringing it to our house to eat it. So <laughs> <laughs> after Rachel hung up the phone with them, they looked at each other and were like, they we really need to figure out what we're bringing because- <laughs> They're really excited for dinner. <laughs> we're, we're really excited. It was like, this is perfect timing. We could really use the food. Uh, so we had some dinner. We visited with Cam and Claire and the grandbaby for a little while. And it's, what is it now? Like almost eight o'clock, yeah. 730, eight o'clock, something like that. We're down to three and a half boxes left. I don't know if we're gonna get done tonight or if we're gonna wrap up the rest tomorrow. We'll keep going for a while and we'll see how it goes.
Morning of day two. We ran out of gas last night around nine o'clock. Yeah, it was a little after maybe. Yeah, we did take advantage of the dark because when it gets dark, when it gets chilly, all the bees go to bed. So they were all back in their hives last night. So I took all the boxes that we had left to do, moved them into the garage. We have less of a invasion yes. going on now this morning. Um, but we're getting a lot of honey. A lot of honey. We're not gonna tell you yet how much we got in case some of you played the game and guessed down in the comments. More than I thought we were gonna get so far. Oh really? I think so. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, I think we're still yet to see exactly how much we're gonna get. We are so getting slowed down by this filtration system. And I think Todd mentioned that's what's taking the longest. It really yeah. is. We let it sit overnight. We cleaned all the wax and stuff out of it this morning. So it is going better yep. so far this morning. How many more? Two. We are getting very close to the end. We have spun 100 frames of honey. 99. No, we did that one last oh, one. Oh, we did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was, we ended up with like one left and it was a really small frame. Uh, but we were able to like double up on the sides and spin three at a time and we were able to get all 100 done. Now becomes the part of getting the rest of this filtered. It's probably full still up to about here. And we have a big mess on our hands. We have tools, lugs, everything covered in honey. I need to keep this one though. Yeah. <laughs> the easiest way to clean this stuff is to let the bees clean it. So all of these six boxes that I have that have been spun, those are all gonna get loaded up onto that pallet. I'm gonna take them out back to the picnic table, set them there. There's already several thousand bees on the boxes from yesterday. They will swoop in by the hundreds of thousands and they will clean any bit of remaining honey on them frames. They'll leave most of the wax in place for next year. The tools will put them all out there. Even things like this where it gets wax stuck in there, the bees will literally like pull that wax off to try to get oh, every last bit of honey off. and. They do a phenomenal they'll, job. They'll do a lot of the work for you. Even the the sieve that we're using to filter the honey, I'll put that out there. They will they will destroy all the wax that's stuck in it to get every last little bit of honey out. Even the extractor, when we're done, we'll put this outside. The bees will come in on the inside. They will clean all the honey off of it. And then we basically got to rinse it out with soap and water and then rinse it really good and put it away until next season. Yeah, you definitely don't want to wash it. Another thing, don't take this in your house and clog up your drainage with any potential wax left. So right. we, that's why we let the bees do a good job and Todd will bring out buckets of hot water and wash it outside. It did not take as long as I thought it was going to today. I think we had a pretty good system we developed yesterday we spent today two hours three Not hours no, maybe two hours maybe two hours yeah the last little bit is coming out well we will need to scrape down inside the mm. max tent um we took a break for lunch and i was doing all my research on how to get this beeswax rendered down and potentially save the oh, honey wow. so there's a lot there but there's quite a slurry of honey in there I don't know that I'm going to be that particular because some of the techniques look quite simple if you just boil it with some water, but then I know you ruin your honey, but in total, I don't need any more honey. So how much did we get? We, three and a half, five gallon buckets. This is the last bucket and it's about right here. And there's three more over there that are completely full. Completely full. Yes. Which is awesome. It is more than what I thought. Yeah. I was, I was 
Well, you bought four buckets. But I was reluctant. I was like, uh, you know what? Like, we can always use buckets if we have extra. That's fine. Yeah. But we oh, needed them okay. all. Okay. Okay. But we needed them all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know a lot of this, like I said, is going to go to a very particular use. Uh, our son and future daughter-in-law are using it for wedding favors. So mm -hmm. a lot of it will go to that. And um, I have some personal plans for some of it. Do you? Um, I want to give some away. Of course. To my family. Yeah. And I want to eat some. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Peanut All butter right. and honey sandwich is my favorite way to have honey. Yes. So thanks guys for coming along. I know um, a lot of, I know when we first started um, beekeeping, we watched tons and tons and tons of videos to figure out how to do this. And there's lots of ways to do it. Like I said, we started out just small in the kitchen, making a big honey mess. <laughs> and uh, now we have this, but we know we still want improvements um, year over year. So we'll keep getting better at it every year. And uh, see you guys on next year's honey harvest. Sounds good. This should be hopefully another big one. Yeah. They keep getting bigger every year. Well, yeah. As long as they make it through winter. That's the, <laughs> that's right. the goal. See you guys.